Hey guys, welcome back to the Silice Rose Show. My name is Silice and I'm here with my co-host, Gabri. So for today's video, we are going to just be doing an ultimate life update about my life, about Gabby's life. We're pretty much gonna have girl talk or just a good talk in general. So what we're gonna do right now while you guys are listening to the audio or watching us, we are gonna go on TikTok live as we speak and we are going to be taking actual live questions from viewers. We've never done that before. So we're very excited to see what the fuck you guys are about to ask. But if you guys are ready, we're ready. Let's do this. So what is the first question? Miss producer, what is our drink of... Ask us we like... We have the same one too. Do we? Yeah. Well, years change. Wait, champagne? Champagne. Mimosa. Well, yeah, but we, whenever we're like at events or anything, uh -huh. we always get vodka sodas. <gasps> we oh, bitch, because yeah. we haven't been to an event in like a few months. Yeah, we yeah. love a vodka soda vodka just because sodas. it's just kind of kind of low cows. Yeah, low cow, cow. <laughs> low cow drink, and then champagne. Love champagne, love mimosas. Champagne. Yeah. Ask us some juicy ass questions. Come on, shit that you guys want to know or whether you guys want advice about life. Let us know. Somebody said or asked, "What's your biggest inspiration?" Oh, deep question. This is going to sound very cliche, but my biggest inspiration is my future self. I don't know how to really explain that. No, that makes sense. You know, like yeah. when you're a little kid, you always envision yourself to be something or someone big, you know? And every time I hit a new like point in my life or whatever, I always think of my future self like, fuck, like, do, do I want to give up on life? Do I want to quit? Yes. But future me won't like that. Like, I know if I keep on pushing and I keep on going, my future self will be like, good shit. Good job. You made it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, what that, about you? That's literally my You do? No, I was going to say, say something like that in different words, though, because yeah. I was going to be like, I like I, all I've known is like my past and my yeah. present. So anything that to keep me going is like what I want to have in the future lined up for me. Exactly. Like, it's exactly. just knowing that I have the power to like create the you life do. I'm going to live in the end. Yeah. That's what motivates me the most. That all goes back to manifestation. That shit yeah. is so fucking real. A lot of people don't know how to manifest, but you can literally manifest your entire fucking life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, that's true. What's another question we have? Somebody asked, what's your biggest insecurity? <laughs> Why are you going to ask me? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like physically or I like... Think just, you could do both, honestly. Just um, do both. Cover them. Fuck. My biggest... What's yours? <laughs> what is mine? I'm <laughs> like... I'm not insecure. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I think personality wise, I have this insecurity that I, I don't know how to word it, but the fact that like I kind I'm a people pleaser. So sometimes mm -hmm. I, I feel like my, I'm insecure the fact that I could be seen as like too much for some people. Okay. Like too attentive, too, to like listening like i just don't I'm you're afraid. just around the wrong people because being yeah. around the right people you're never going to be too much you're going to be just that's true. just enough i had that's too much true. lemon water excuse me <laughs> <laughs> um i think my insecurity fuck i don't know if it's an insecurity or if it's just me in my head but it would be how much i tend to like self-sabotage mm. because i one thing about me like i can be proud of everybody in the room whether you just did the bare fucking minimum today or you did something huge today i could be like wow like good job you did that and for me i'm like mm, you could have done better mm -hmm. and in doing so much like self-sabotage you end up like not really liking yourself because you're never yeah. even proud of yourself you don't celebrate yourself enough you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i would say that one i think that's a good one that's an insecurity i think it can be yeah i'm trying to think physically if i'm being a thousand percent honest <laughs> i don't want to say physically bitch. <laughs> i think it's just because like we're Latina, so, like, I have wider hips than, like... I, I've always naturally had wide hips, though. But, like, when you're little... And, like, even... Like, I was, like, 10 years old, and I'd have moms telling me, like, you have great hips for childbearing. And I'd be like... I'm 10! I'm 10 years old! I am a old. fetus! <laughs> I am 10! I think that just made me hyper-aware yeah. of my body. Yeah. Like, at such a young age. Yeah. And then, like, that came with, like, being sexualized really early on in my oh, life. Oh, God, Like, yeah. by, like, guys in my class and yeah. stuff like that. So, I feel like that's just that's always been something I'm hyper aware of which I don't mm. think a lot because people want like wide hips people they want do. this so but mm. but like being so young and having like a negative connotation on it yeah. I think that's what really has made me like I'm an overthinker about that damn stuff. but yeah that's a good thing to have though wide hips bitch 
I'm in the gym yeah. to get that. The fuck? <laughs> don't be fucked up. So somebody asked any advice for a first time tattoo, like they're getting their tattoo. For oh the my first gosh! Time. Don't use numbing cream. <laughs> oh my god! Are you gonna say you're no, numbing no, cream? I was, <laughs> get drunk. <laughs> no, I was gonna say. I was so mad at my mom when she wouldn't let me get a tattoo, like, right when I turned 18. Like, it was something that I was so upset about. But I think it's the biggest blessing, actually, because I really think it's, like, no matter how long you've planned your tattoos for. I was planning tattoos since I was, like, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I've thought about this tattoo. I want it for sure. I want it for sure. And then when I I got a tattoo, like, when I was, like, 19, 20, and that tattoo, tattoo, I kind of regret, where I'm like, I wish I didn't get that tattoo. What was the tattoo? So I think. Even though you think you're ready, like yeah. when you're freshly 18, I still think you should wait. Like, I till don't. At least do it. 20. Do it. Do it. I, I don't think, think you should wait. Because Mm-mm. think about it. Like by the time like, you start getting more tattoos, you yeah. have this vision of the kind of tattoos you want. Like the theme. And sometimes yeah. that first one or two tattoos ruins the flow of the ones you want in the future. That makes sense. So that's that what my sense. thing is. Because like I got, like, I have like a random like tattoo right here. Yeah. And, like, a random tattoo over here. Oh, I like, you have a bunch of random ones. I they look do. good. But like. Now I want these bigger pieces gotcha. that I that those take up the space. But they're so small they would be an easy cover up. Well, not really, because this one's like takes up my whole floor, like my whole bicep. Okay, never so, mind. I think I don't know. <laughs> never just be hyper aware of like yeah. what your future self is gonna want as the artwork okay, on their true. body. That's my thing. Yeah. I that's great advice. I can't say I agree <laughs> because I'm the minute I turned 18. I mean, you guys can see, but I have like a cross behind my neck and I got this rose on my hand. I got my California done and I also got this done all when I turned 18 because I knew what I wanted, you know, until this day. I don't regret it. Only thing I regret is absolutely nothing. I just hate how like in time, like they kind of fade away. So um, I feel like. Some people, maybe if you want a tattoo, but you're kind of unsure how she said, wait it out, you know, wait it out. But sometimes you also just know what the fuck you want. Some people just know. And when you do it, you have no fucking regrets. Like this tattoo is so iconic to me. And I got it when I was also 19. Thank you for the gift. When I was 19 and I still don't regret it. It's still my favorite tattoo. So just kind of listen to your body and trust your gut. You know what I mean? Everybody's different. That's a good point. So somebody said tattoos show your evolution from where you start to where you are, which is so true. That's beautiful. Oh, bitch. That's good. You know what I hate when people say, why the fuck are you getting tattoos? You know how you're going to look when you're old? Oh, my bitch. That's so... I wrinkly, just, just like I, you. Tattoos, like, <laughs> remind you of where you were in that moment yeah. in your life. That is for sure true. So true. Yeah, so a lot of back. a lot of people are asking about meet and greets and if that's something you'll do this year. Oh, shit. Let's do it. Where do you guys want me to go? L.A., Texas, a New York. Texas. Yeah, Texas. A lot of Texas. Texas. Yo, the biggest meet and greets, meet and greets uh, I've ever had have all been Texas. Like Texas? thousands. It's been fucking wow. crazy. Okay, I've never let's been do to it. Texas. So. Yeah, we have to go. It's fucking lit. It's so lit. If you guys are down, we can plan it for like. Everyone's I- commenting their cities. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. That's what I fucking love that. I love that. Yeah, we're out. Let's do it. I haven't done it since 2018. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta get out there. Someone said, how do you build your self-worth? Like your self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth. Yeah, probably all along the lines. Those all encapsulate what self-worth is. Yeah. I'm just gonna be as transparent as possible. I used to hate myself for so many fucking years. And I would always compare myself to other girls and but their body looks like that and their hair is longer and their skin is prettier and they don't have this and I have this. When I literally, bro, it's I know it sounds so cliche, but it's so fucking true. When I stopped comparing myself to other people and I stopped putting myself around people who also hate themselves, I evolved. Because who you hang around with is who you become. You know, also I was... At the time that I hated myself, I was like in a very bad relationship. So those also don't make you feel confident. They don't, you don't even feel loved in your relationship. How do you fucking love yourself, you know? So I think if you stop comparing yourself to other people, surround yourself with people who love themselves that can help you grow, you'll just gain so much confidence and self-love. What is, what is your number one tip on how to be the most confident woman, man, whatever? Like that one tip. I think... The thing that had that has stuck with me like yeah. since I was younger, I don't even know who said it, but someone literally told me like you have to fake it till you make it. 
And I I always thought that was, like, dumb. I was like, no, like, if you're being fake, like, if you're faking confidence, like, it's never going to be real. But literally, how we're talking about manifestation, I think if you convince yourself that you are the most confident person in the world, eventually some truth, like, comes into that. So I had, I faked it till I made it. Like, that was it. Like, it was convincing yourself. Like, no matter if it's, like, sit in the mirror, you tell yourself, like, you're the baddest bitch there is. And, like, you don't believe it, like... Do it every single day and eventually like those words are going to start sticking and you're going to start embodying that that mentality and that character trait. Yeah, because in a sense what you're creating, like what you're saying is you're doing like a healthy habit. Yeah, because what you do over and over becomes a habit, whether it's biting your nails, whether it's being in the gym, being consistent, you're going to see results, whether it's anything you do. That will determine if you if you are creating a bad habit or a good habit at the moment. So, yeah, what she said is so I know a lot of people. They're like, same exact, I said the same shit like maybe a year ago when I was on live and people were like, why the fuck would you fake it? That just means you're not confident. I'm like, that's the same way as you create a bad habit. You know, Mm -hmm. you may actually be worth it, but if you always tell yourself, no, like I'm unlovable, I'm not shit, you know, I'm I'm ugly, I'm fat. That's what you're gonna keep reaping. And you're gonna start to believe your own fucking lies. Mm -hmm. So same exact concept whenever you're trying to manifest the better you, how she said, if you're repetitive enough with it, you're gonna start to believe that you're actually, I use it, the baddest yeah. bitch ever. The baddest bitch ever. There is. <laughs> yeah. I had to hit rock bottom before I even came to those realizations. So I yeah. feel like the earlier that you realize this stuff, that like you're setting yourself up, you're setting yourself up better for the end result, you know? Hell yeah, dude. I fucking agree with that. I agree. So somebody asked, this is a kind of a funny one. What are your icks? Whether it be in a relationship or maybe just a general ick? <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, let's do relationship, I guess. Relationship. It starts like something funny, like yeah. something that's something just like funny. annoying to you. Everything's annoying to me. I don't like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't like when my boyfriend wears like gray on gray. Like that, <laughs> <laughs> that's an ick for me. How I'm come? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> or if you, why are you this pair, way? If you pair khaki with gray or like. It, for me, it's like clo- clothes and color stuff like that. It really gets under my skin. I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you want him to wear more colorful clothes? No, just like wear black pants. I don't need to see your gray sweatshirt <laughs> and your gray sweatpants. And they're different shades of gray. <laughs> oh, that too. Even if they match, though, I can't. I just cannot. I just I don't like gray. It just really throws me off. I don't know. That bugs me. I mean, khaki. Don't wear. Oh, gray. don't wear. Don't wear jeans <laughs> so with rips. Problem with gray. <laughs> jeans with rips. There. No man should be wearing tight jeans with rips. You I'm think sorry. So? Leave it in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Cancel her. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Stay. <laughs> Damn, that's actually a good one. Fuck. I don't know what my eggs are. I feel like mine are mine are more serious. You said gray. <laughs> Well, it's so supposed to be like simple and like fun. Yeah, things that you're simple. just like, Ugh. like that bugs me. What did I say bugged me about? Remember, I we're like remember. in the car going to. Um, ah, yeah, we went to re- lunch or something. What the fuck was my ick? I, I think it was how tired she acts when she wakes oh, up. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes. that was it. Yes. You act like you just fought World War Three. Get your ass up. <laughs> People are in the comments are going to be like, oh my God, what the fuck? That's weird. But like, I understand like when you're first waking up, like it takes you time to come back to realization, but it shouldn't take you 15 minutes. That shit just boils my fucking blood. I don't know why. Like wake up quicker. Fucking hate that. Okay. So what's like your most embarrassing moment? Something you'll never forget. Oh my God. (laughs) Where do we start? (laughs) Um, You go. (laughs) Since you know, so, bitch. Um, I just when I'm little, like I have a vivid, you know those memories that are like burned into yes. your brain? Yes. That's what it is. Like, okay, I, mine was, we were in Peru. Oh. Kylie, I don't know, I don't know if you were with us, but we went to Peru and we were all like younger and we all had to go to school. Like, where this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we went to Peru <laughs> and they made us go to school for the week just to experience school <laughs> in Peru. <laughs> and I, bro, so like... <laughs> terrible okay so we went to school for a week in peru it's probably like a stupid answer but it's the truth and during that week i was like oh my god this guy is so cute i was like what 11 and i saw a guy that i liked so we had gym class okay i don't know i'm not a fucking gymnast or whatever so we had to like do all these jumps and shit and i just try to in my head i was like oh bitch you better do a flip like you are bad as fuck you know so i want to go jump and i did a flip and i fucking flew off the whole mat and he was watching and laughing i was like 
to walk away. So does that mean that you, you know, I, I don't know. I was just very embarrassing. Like I tried to show off and I fell on my fucking face and he was laughing and I was like, oh, <laughs> I, I can feel that feeling. I'm just like, oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking, so what about you? I, mine was like, I was in fourth grade. Okay. I was living in fourth grade and like our teachers had seating charts uh-huh. still and she sat me next to the boy I had a crush on. Yeesh. Like a big crush. And, oh my God. It's so embarrassing. Sorry, <laughs> John, you farted. I sneezed. <laughs> She said, you're going to get to know me today. You're going to see me. I just me, remember, man. I was petrified. I'm sure he was too. I, I tried to, like, put it, like, blame, like, the person next to me. Like, I looked at her. Wait, have you seen that video of that girl that farted, like, on, on, remember? It was, like, a girl, it was a meme, and she was recording, and she farted. She's like, oh, my God, that scared me. Yes. <laughs> that was you, bitch. And it really, that, like, those emotions and, like, the feeling has been burned into my brain. And I just, like, I could never, I'll never. How do you come back from that? Oh, it's forever embarrassing. That's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened. I have a question. So when that little toot slipped out, what did he, how did he react? Did he, like, what happened? He, like, pushed from his seat and was laughing so hard. I'd be like, can you change me seats? No, I was so embarrassed. I'll never get over that. That's worse than mine. It's so bad. It happens, you know? It's a natural body function. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's so fucking funny. What's the next question? That was hilarious. Oh my God, bitch, you farted. (laughs) Have you, like, heard of him these days that you're... We were, like, fall... We went to high school together. I would have (laughs) lied. No, no, no way. We went to high school together and everything still. You guys never like, talked about it? Oh, no, okay. never. <laughs> so never I, I, will, I will never, ever bring it up ever in no, front of him or to him. Absolutely not. So what's a song that comes to mind that like best describes your personality? That is such a good question. Or maybe like, that's kind of a hard one. I don't one. know. I hear the same two songs on repeat every day. <laughs> I'm not sure. Or maybe what's your favorite song? What's your yeah, song? what's your favorite song or like your theme song, your hype hmm. song? Titi me pregunto by Bad Bunny. That is my number one hype song. I play it every day, <laughs> three times a day. When I'm pre gaming for the club, I play it. <laughs> when it's in the club, I play it. He says my name in the song, so like that's and that's on period. That's what solidified it. That's like my jam. Fuck, I don't, I don't know if I have one. What's the new Nicki Minaj song? Red oh Ru- God, gonna... Ruby, Red Ruby. What? What is it? I don't know. I, Ru- I think Ruby's I've heard red, it. red, Ruby Rose. What the fuck, dude? What song is I that? I wish I could tell you. I Someone's would. gonna tell us in the comments. That new Nicki Minaj song. That one is my shit. Did anybody say it? I can't even see. Red Ruby the sleeve. I would never. Oh, guess Ruby that. the sleeves. Oh, sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> red Ruby okay. the sleeves. Okay. That's yeah, that's what it's called. Okay. That was a good question. Now I have to think about what song embodies. Somebody me. commented that you taught them how to curl their lashes. <gasps> Oh, that makes me happy. Yeah, I made that video like fucking what six years ago, maybe. That's a while ago. So, yeah, Damn. I barely have lashes now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't try. No, I'm just kidding. What's your guys' favorite food? Food. Ooh. Or favorite dish? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Why don't I ever think of these things? I like Chinese food a lot. Really? Yeah, I you've been on a Chinese kick. That's true. <laughs> I love wonton soup. <laughs> I don't know. I love Indian food. Like Ooh. I'm like ups- like me. That's like my comfort food. Really? Yeah. You never had it. It's oh, we have to go. Indian food is like one of the best foods ever. Like Indian food and Peruvian food, I really oh. think are like so fucking good. What about Mexican food? That shit is so fire. I like Mexican food too. Oh. But I'm so picky. That's only- I'm not picky, but I am sometimes. It's weird, but Indian food. Wow. Yeah, though. Indian food is so good. Like yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Let's go. I'm down. We have to go. If you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? It sounds like a very cliche answer, but like, I really would just want world peace. Okay. No. That's it. I feel like there's so many things I would change. So like the blanket answer I could give is like, if I could like give everybody like a high dose of empathy, that would correct (laughs) so many things that are wrong in the world. Like. Oh my gosh, hunger, yeah. homelessness, everything, pets, like all these, like I feel like empathy would just correct so much. Because so, so many people don't, don't care about shit that you probably yeah, should Yeah, like if it doesn't about. affect me, then like, oh well. Exactly. But I'm like, I don't know. I'm one of those people who like, just, I don't know. I just think about everybody. I it rather, me out. which is good though. I rather be a person that cares too much versus like not enough. Yeah, yeah. me you know? too. Because at least your heart is into it, you That's know, not true. your ego. Yeah. So. 
If you had three wishes, what would they be? Get rid of my student loans. <laughs> That's the first one. You guys tip her. <laughs> Bring the gifts. Get rid of the student loans and the debt I have from college. Um, what would my second wish be? I don't know. I'd wish for my mom to just be like super successful. She's already successful, yeah. but like I'd wish like the like never ending success for my mom. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And then I think I would save my third wish for as long as I could till like I really needed it. Like, or if you can that's wish smart. for three yeah. more wishes. Oh, or can I wish for unlimited wishes? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't think that. Yeah, She's that's like, not that an account. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, would your, worked. <laughs> what would yours be? I don't know. I think I would wish to stay young forever. It's really? such a basic. I'm Sunscreen. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sunscreen. Be young forever, probably. Um, kind of along the lines with yours, except like my mom is successful already, but more of like, I just, you know how parents are, especially moms, they'll never really tell you how they feel. They'll never tell you if they're sad because moms and dads, they have this responsibility to like always act like they're okay for their kids. Mm -hmm. No matter how old you get, they they have to be like your backbone. So I just, I would wish and pray that she's like genuinely actually happy. Mm -hmm. Like in her position in life, like, are you actually happy? Like, are you actually living the life that you want to live? Like, is this really enough for you? Yeah. But of course, when I'm like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, no, no. <laughs> but you can't always You don't be want fine. her to shield you from um, exactly. her like true feelings and everything. Exactly. And I would also wish for, <clears throat> I guess, no anxiety. Oh my God, that's a good that's one. That's a good one. That's a real yeah. good one, yeah. Because having anxiety, whether it's like ang regular anxiety, social anxiety, this anxiety... That shit prevents you from so many good opportunities. It shields you from the world. It makes you like self-sabotage in your head. Yeah. You make up scenarios that aren't even there. You break your own heart every fucking day with a scenario you've made up that probably will never come true. I just feel like a world without anxiety would just be like, like nice. Everyone would be happier and more yeah. free, I feel like. Because anxiety yeah. can hold you back from so much. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it can get really crippling sometimes. Yeah, and I feel like it would help people be more in the moment. Not like, yeah. what's going to happen? Oh, my God. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you look back, you're like, damn, I didn't even like really enjoy my life. I was too busy worrying about what the fuck could have happened or would have happened. But I didn't like actually enjoy where I was in that moment. Mm -hmm. So a world without anxiety, that would just be fucking beautiful, honestly. If your life was a movie, what would you name it? Oh, my God. I probably couldn't even answer that. I feel like I had a high school project that was this. We had to, like, name a movie about mm. your life. And everyone was so clever with their names. Like, yeah. I, one girl's title, she, like, called it, like, um, I'm not going to say her name, but, like, so-and-so's upward spiral. And I was like, ooh, that's, ooh. like, clever. I like that. I think but, a better question would be, who would you want to play like you in a movie? Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, what's that actress? That girl that's... Who could encapsulate you? I'm just trying to think. Wow. I was like, I think she have to like cast herself. <laughs> no, period. What is that actress? The one that was in Power? Oh, She's like in oh. a lot of Tyler Perry movies. It starts with a T. Taraji? Yeah. I can't remember her. Is, what's her full name? Taraji. Something P. She's in the new... Someone uh, may know here. No, not T Tasha? Okay. Not Angela Johnson, no. It's Taraji, She's lit, though. Taraji something, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't think of her last name, but I know yeah. who you're talking about. Henson? Yes. You guys yeah. are saying it. Yes. Everybody in the chat is saying it. I would She's an Henson. amazing actress. I oh would my want God. her to play me because I feel like, I don't know if like that's how she really is in real life, but like how she acts in movies is like how I am. Like I'm very like, I'm very emotional. I'm very personal. I'm very like blunt. I'm very like assertive. Some people don't like it. Some people do like it. I'm never scared to speak my mind. I'm, I don't shy away from like conflicts. And she's also like always plays like a like a boss role too. You know, like she's not, she's gonna like, she's tough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I would want her to play me. I really have no idea who would like, play me. None. I'm also like young. So I'm like thinking like, do I pick someone young? Cause they'd play like my adolescence. Like my I would say, I wouldn't say it really matters if you're young, more of like, what actress do you think has that personality or that persona to like really, really like play Gabby? I don't think anybody does. <laughs> but I know. I feel like. We need some new actresses. I would like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like anyone who had a play me would be stressed out. So I'm just like, I don't really We don't really want to do that to them. I wouldn't want to do that to them. But like, I have actresses that I love and admire. Like that, who? What's one? Like, 
for some reason, only I could think of right now is Olivia Rodrigo because I love. She's, a, she's well, yeah. She started off as an actress. Oh, I did not. Know I just that. feel like she would do a really good job in encapsulating me as a. Oh my God, Alexa Demi would play me in high school perfectly. That's I don't a good like, one. But I feel like she could encapsulate That's a good my one. essence mm-hmm. of when I was like younger yeah. and like transitioning through college. I feel like Alexa Demi could. Bitch, body I think that's a good one. Yeah. Boom, there you go. That's your answer. Okay, so who's your guys' celebrity crush? Well, Matthew McConaughey. Wait, really? I've been obsessed with him since um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Like, I was like six years old watching the movie. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh my God. I, I mean, he's him. cute, yeah. <laughs> I can't say mine. <laughs> I'm not even gonna, <laughs> I think actually one follows me. I'm not going to say that shit. No. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> just Matthew know it's a female. Yeah, Alexa Demi too. So, oh really? She, I, I mean, she is pretty. I yeah. have crushes on like everybody. So it's like <laughs> everybody's beautiful. Everyone's gorge. <gasps> everybody's gorge. <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, I would love to teleport. That's like my number one. Ooh. I could teleport anywhere in the world at any time. I wouldn't have to like drive for work. Damn. I could just teleport there. I could just go to Europe. Teleport there. Like I wouldn't need a car. Who cares about gas? I changed my answer. I wanted to teleport too. I was gonna yeah. say I wanted to be invisible. <laughs> For what? I was like, that's good. That's a good one too, yeah. Though. See, my answer used to be I wish that Not I could to read mine. Yeah. Oh my god. But gosh. I've changed my answer as the years have gone yeah. by because that would just give you so much anxiety and like you would really know what people are saying. I would never <laughs> want to keep your thoughts to yourself. I don't want to know. Like, damn, look at that fucking booger in that video. And, and, and in real life, they're like, yeah, hi. Literally. Oh no, I don't want to hear yeah. your thoughts. I don't even want to hear mine. I think mine. teleportation is a good one. Smart. Wait, I just yeah. saw a funny one. If what you were a cereal, what would you be? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I don't know. I think that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. No one. explanation. <laughs> I'm Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's been a while since you ate your favorite cereal. What's my favorite cereal? What? <laughs> I don't even remember. I was going to say Lucky oh. Charms, but... Oh, that's fun. See, that's a fun fact, guys. She likes Lucky Charms. I love Lucky Charms. Okay, yeah, I'll be Lucky Charms and fuck it. What about... No, here's a good one. If you were a cocktail, what would you be? Ooh, I feel like I'd want to be... I'm trying to think about these fancy drinks. <laughs> I think you guys would be something like spicy. That's what mm, I was like a, like a spicy mark. Oh, a spicy. No, I want to be something like in a fancy glass though. <laughs> Make it spicy in a fancy like a glass. like a spice like people. How, how do people drink rum? Like in those like I cups? don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. Like like a spiced rum. I don't know. That would be a shot. Of, <laughs> I'd be a shot of vodka with no chaser. Oh my! Like God. I am a lot to handle is- sometimes. <laughs> Like, oh, so Jane I would like to be like a martini or something. I, I oh, want to be something sophisticated, but I really. I'm but does not... it match our personality though? Are we sophisticated? I feel like we're margaritas. <laughs> like we're yeah. spicy margaritas. Like, <laughs> what are those little fucking bowls? The, the buzz balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. We're a buzz we're ball. Buzz bitch. Ball. Oh, those are. <laughs> those, yeah, are those, those are deadly. I literally drank some of that on Friday when I went out for my friend's birthday. Yeah. Oh my god. Bitch, we are a buzz ball. <laughs> <laughs> we said martini. <laughs> What's God, your um, guys' go-to perfume? Ooh, I love perfume. Yeah, which one? I like to mix the milk commodity perfume with the... Mm. A ver- it's like the vanilla by like... It's my Sephora one. Seven, Is it ver- Seven Virtues? No, oh. no, no. I mix two. I mix the milk commodity. And then it's like the base... Everyone has it from Sephora. Someone probably knows. It's like... A clear bottle, but has a flower on the front. It's called Vanilla Woods. Hmm. Is it Daisy by Marc no, Jacobs? No, no, no. It's called Vanilla Woods, but I don't know the brand of it. I want to say it's like Seven Virtues or something, but... I've never heard of it. Milk them. Commodity and that Vanilla Woods one from Sephora. That's like my go-to combo. That first one sounds like it smells good milk something. Milk Commodity. It's, oh, yeah. wow. Do you They're still wear warm. the pink one with the like the little... One? No, oh. you. the With the diamonds on the bottle... Oh, uh, Britney Spears? Yeah. That, yes. Iconic. That's iconic. Like a, a go-to. Iconic. I yeah. have Britney Spears. That's my favorite one. The Paris Hilton one. And then I like the Burberry one. Whatever the yeah. fuck it's called. Just Those a Burberry good. one. Somebody said instead of four locos, you guys are two locas. <laughs> two what? <laughs> two locas <laughs> instead of four locos. Oh, my God. Let me think about four locos, though. <laughs> I forget that four locos are like an energy drink mixed with alcohol. So one time I went to are a they? concert. Yeah. They're like the worst that you could drink. Like, if you want to get fucked up fast, just do a buzz ball. Sign do not up. do the four loco. But yeah. me and my friend, like, chugged a whole four loco before a concert. And I passed out in the bathroom. <laughs> Did you even see the concert? I, saw, I came back. <laughs> I missed the opener. I missed the opener, but I came back for the headliner. But... 
Damn. Oh my god. Four locos. I could Sounds not. like a good fucking time. What's <laughs> one word to describe yourself? <laughs> I got the awkward pauses when we think we're like, uh, we're like uh. I don't know. I want to say I have a I don't know. I want to say confident, but then I also want to say assertive, but then I also want to say hard working, but then I also want to say resilient. Mm, those are all great words. Like just that bitch, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna whole package. I feel yeah, like I would say that I'm I would say that I'm pretty charismatic. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Damn. I think that's I am. empathetic. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'll yeah. say empathetic too, but I feel like I'm always talking about empathy. So but I was like, let me switch though. it up. But Someone yeah. said, I just broke up with my boyfriend last night. Oh. What is some advice? Block him. <laughs> yeah, no, for no, sure. No, honestly <laughs> though, like, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. But definitely, I think blocking the person, because that's going to shield you from a lot of self hurt you're going to do by snooping and looking and yeah. searching. And like, yeah, I think you have to get rid of it until you can really also deal with yourself. Don't blame yourself for everything. I feel like when people go through breakups, like at the end of the day, nobody was perfect. You fucked up. They fucked up, too. But when people go through breakups, they tend to really like self-sabotage and they're like, well, wh- is it me? Like, what if what if I was prettier? What if what if I just did more? And what if he just didn't like me because X, Y and Z? Like, you cannot get into this like self-sabotaging phase either where you just convince yourself that you were like the fucking problem because that's also not healthy for yourself or your mental health. You know what I mean? So I think that's a good one, too, is just being self-aware and yeah. realizing that. You guys both could have been the problem. Mm-hmm. So don't blame yourself for everything either because that's not not good at all. We've all done that. Been yeah. there, done that. It sounds cheesy, but yeah. I do really think that like every heartbreak is like saving you for something that you're meant to wi- Period. be in the middle of later on. The that makes deep. sense. I do think it's true. It sounds so cheesy. My mom told me when I was like 16, I was like, you don't understand, mom. <laughs> you don't get but, my pain. But then I'm like 20, 22, 23, and I'm like, nope, she was being for real when she said Damn, that. Damn, that's so true, so. though. That's crazy. So, what was that funny question? I heard you guys oh, laughing. I don't know. Which question is no, it? The one you said. That was a good one. Um, give us one truth and two lies. <gasps> Wait, what? Like, eh, hold like on. it's kind of like it's facts about yourself, and yeah. like people have to figure out which one was the so truth and which one was the lie. You never tell them. You, you just come them, up with three, three facts. Things, two are lies. One is the truth, and you never tell them which one is which. I hate wearing shorts. Hmm. I love to sleep in. I have commitment issues. Do the math. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bitch! That's, those are like good ones. Mine are kind of st- no, mine are <laughs> stupid now. <laughs> no, it's okay. Mine were. Let me think. I I have them in my head right now. Um, look at the camera, so like no one can like read my facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been a serial cheater in a relationship before. I've been arrested. Or I hate wearing socks. Damn, those are good. Those are good. <laughs> they were? We need to talk after this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need to talk after this. I feel like I this. don't know which one's which. Wait, what's I'm, the first should one? Should I be offended? <laughs> what is the first one? This what was the first one? Ser- I've, I've been a serial cheater. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Like, constantly cheating. Consistent cheater in the relationship. Okay, mood. <laughs> no, not, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ask us some super juicy questions. Even if, even if it's about you guys, like some advice you guys want. Let us know. Someone says she was a cheater. I feel it. I like it. Dude, I just heard that one right now. You'll never know. You'll never know. What's your biggest fear in life? Failing. My biggest fear is not being as successful as I imagined myself to be. My biggest fear is just failing in like my fucking, in my life. Failing where, to the point where I can no longer like provide for my family or be there. Failing where now it's just like, like, fuck. Like, I hit rock bottom, and now, like, it, that's just, like, it. That's my biggest fear. Just fucking failing. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's a universal one for a lot of people. Yeah. I want to say that my biggest fear is, like, losing myself again. Ooh. Like, that's mine. Like, I feel like I've worked so hard to be so strong in the person that I am and yeah. to, like, hold the beliefs and ideals that I do that... Um, I also know I can get really caught up with things. Mm. So, like, I, my biggest fear is, like, losing myself to a point of having to, like... Um, refind it all over again because that was a really stressful and hard process for me. God, that's, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, because when you lose yourself, that shit can last up to like years. Yeah, that's like true. Like a long fucking time. You can be like burnt out and just not know who the fuck you are or what you want mm-hmm. in life for a while. Damn, that's a good one. Somebody asked if you have plans to do music anytime soon. Well, we had two songs, but it just never ended up working out. So maybe, maybe one day in the future. 
This awkward fucking silence. Someone I know. play Bad Bunny. Someone play music. The silence makes me so uncomfortable. That's a fucking fun fact. You know, they 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 said something about that. Like, in, do it. It's like just saying, like, if the more uncomfortable you are with silence, is the less in, the less comfortable you are with the people. What do you mean? I don't get it. Like, like with people around. The me? more comfortable you are with the person, the more comfortable you are with silence. Well then, y'all bitches make me uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just don't like the silence. I feel like the silence is so loud and it's awkward. So I'm like, oh, so funny. How's everybody's day going? I be thinking when it's silent. Somebody yeah. asked if you've ever been cheated on. Yeah. Once. I'm not gonna say the story because this person is very, 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 very fucking problematic. Because some people just live to just do stupid shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But when I was under the age of 18, I don't think I've been cheated on after that. <laughs> Unless y'all know something I don't. Yeah, just once. What about you? I have a theory that I was cheated on and the person just will never admit By to it. By your recent? It. No. Oh, oh no, God, no, 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 no. Not the one that you're with now. Oh, your oh. recent Yes, ex. yes, yes, yes. <gasps> I, oh, and I think that does come down to what people classify as cheating. Yeah. But I can just say that the way that some events fell, yeah. the timeline is very suspicious. And it's really hard to believe that the person wasn't engaged with another individual to some extent. I want to ask questions, but I yeah. don't want to make it too personal. Oh, I don't care. So, like, what, like, what, what is your theory, though? Like, what, what we're, okay. I need, just, I need just, an explanation. Basically, I was together with this person for a long time. And then they broke up with me out of nowhere. Like, yeah. I'm talking, like straight out of nowhere mm -hmm. like i love yous and niceness and everything like literally and then they got off work and then they just broke up with me out of nowhere oh, wow. just like on the drive home yeah. and then just did not talk to me for two days came to talk to me and like had like the final breakup talk didn't really have much to offer just like broken up and i was like okay fine but then the next day they like are dating a girl and they're with her for like a month and then he leaves her and comes back to me afterwards but i'm just like there had to be, like, mm. flirting or texting or exchanges. Because you didn't find that bitch that quick. Exactly. True. Exactly. Yeah. So and I, have you ever called him out on it? And what do you say? Oh, I have. Because we because we got back together. Like, yeah. don't do it. Don't get back to with the cheater. Or go, <laughs> don't get back with the ex. With but, any exes. No exes. But I got back with him. And, like, it was a question that I had to ask. Mm. And he just, like, would deny. He like, no, like, I never flirted with her. I never this with her. I never that. Like, it, when I was with you, mm. like, it was just, like, me and you. And I was like... That doesn't make any sense. Because also, as a girl, if I knew someone had a girl, like, a, like if I was like a girl and there was a yeah. guy who's interested in me or not interested in me, he had a girlfriend, and I know they they've been together for a long time, and then they, he just asks me out, I, no. I I wouldn't just be like, oh yeah, sure. There would have to be flirting or something that yeah. happened prior. Like I don't know, yeah. it's just a suspicious. You don't just situation. get in a relationship that quick from one day to the yeah. next. Yeah. So after like being together like the other person for like over a year, yeah. like I don't know, it's just a little fishy. I wonder if they still talk. Beats me. Damn. Who knows? That is fucking juicy. I don't trust. It. I feel like he. I feel like maybe he didn't like physically do anything with her up until you guys like yeah. broke up but that's mm -hmm. still you can still cheat without being physical mm -hmm. you know that's what why I mean? it's like so. that's my theory my theory he so somebody said i've been single my whole life people say i'm picky but i've always been happy being alone any advice i have none it seems like you know what the fuck you want yeah. it seems like you know what you're doing and at the end of the day people will always pass judgment because either they're unhappy with themselves or they wish they could be alone, but they can't because people can't even fathom the thought of being alone. So they feel like they have to be with somebody to be happy. So I think if you know what you want, you have your standards, you're okay with it, and you're actually happy being alone, I think you're good where you are. And in, in all this time being alone, I think you're just giving the right person time to just come find you, honestly. Mm -hmm. So I think so many people are alone for a big part of their life while others are always taken. So I think that you are not only like giving it time for the right person to come along, but... I don't know. I feel like you're doing a lot of like self work just by being alone. You can work on yourself a lot just by being alone. It's crazy because you realize shit you don't normally realize when you're with other people. So I don't know. I don't know if that was helpful, but <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> she's like, saying, yeah. no, I think that's good. I think you're just like, you're waiting for the correct person. Yeah. And you shouldn't waste your time on anyone who's not going to meet the standards that you have. Right. I don't think there is such thing as too high standards. Now, I don't want to talk financially. I'm never one to look at like, finances when i get with someone i don't care if you make more if you make way less i don't care um yeah as long as your standards are like i don't know i guess not what the fuck is that word 
materialistic, right? Mm -hmm. Although a lot of people are materialistic, which I don't want to pass judgment on that, but also like you can't depend on people to like buy you shit and do everything for you. You know what I mean? I don't know. Somebody asked, should I be worried if my boyfriend snaps other girls in front of me and I've confronted him about if it? If he's doing that shit in front of you, <laughs> what is he doing behind your back? Bitch. Yep. Yes. That's the tea. I don't give We're a fuck. We're all concerned. No. He just doesn't respect you. Because if he did, he would at least have the decency to fucking hide it. Still. Why is he Snapchatting girls? Why? I, so why I can't he, get over that first part. <laughs> why why does he have friends that are girls? Call me crazy. That's fine. I'm not I'm not in that phase anymore where I want to be like the cool girlfriend. Like, I'm yeah. okay with you going to strip clubs. Like, mm, that doesn't make me insecure. But you got me fucked up. Like, <laughs> No, bitch. No. If he's doing that shit in front of your fucking face, what is he doing behind your back? That's my question. No, yeah, that's a good one. To and have. also, you, my friend, need to take some accountability yourself because you are allowing this to happen. You're being so nonchalant. Passive. You're being so passive. You're just letting it slide because you don't want to make him mad and you don't want to fight. Man, fuck that shit. State your concerns because if not, they're going to be like, this girl is so easy to walk on and manipulate. People call me crazy all the time, but one thing you can't call me is weak or weak-minded. Or, or naive. It, period. Yeah, so I just wonder what he's doing behind your back. Not to be an instigator, but I just wonder. I, I don't know, I wonder. Okay, these questions are fucking good. I like these. Somebody wants a close-up on your nails. My finger's a little fucked up. <laughs> Those are me now. Okay. You're like, not your bandage, bitch. <laughs> Do you believe someone can be friends with their exes? No. Yeah. Well, you go first. We had an episode about this. If you haven't listened to it, go listen yeah. to it. Link but um, can people be friends with their exes? I think yes, but I think most of the time it's not a complete platonic relationship on both sides. Because yeah. I have been friends with an ex, and on my end, it was completely platonic, yeah. like, just friendship. But on their end, there was, like, ulterior motives that mm -hmm. weren't just platonic friendship. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's possible. I just think it's very rare that you're in situations where each person is on the same... What is it? The same... Same page? Same page, yeah. Same page. Same Somebody page. said no, unless you live across the world from each other. <laughs> I like that. It's just so perfect. With my response, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes and no, because I've seen people be friends with their exes and like, it just works. Nobody cares. Like, it's almost like those people that are friends with their exes, they knew they were never even meant to be together. Mm -hmm. That's how y'all could be friends. Like that relationship was just not supposed to happen. But in most cases, I think that being friends with your ex is like not a good thing for your mental health at all. Um... I think that could potentially ruin a good new relationship for yourself. I think that could make your new partner feel some kind of way. Definitely. And you also can't call them insecure for that when that's just what you're doing is rude. What you're doing is not making your current partner feel good. You know, like, would you want your partner to be friends with their exes? Probably not. So why are you doing it? So um, I don't even like any of my exes, so that would never even fucking happen. But I would, <laughs> even if I did have respect for one, I would never be friends with them because one, you're in my past for a reason, okay? Two, that wouldn't make my partner feel good. And what my partner feelings, like that matters the most to me right now versus how my ex feels, you know? And I saw this quote and it yeah. how the, I don't know how the fuck it went, but it was like, if you're a man, it's almost like, how, I don't know how to explain this. It's almost like whenever a girl asks a guy, she's like, oh, hey, are you single? And he was like, no, sorry, I have a girlfriend. Why are you sorry? So some men or some women too, they much rather protect the feelings of someone else that's not their partner. So if you can't like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I get what you're saying though. Yeah. Like you have to be like, okay with hurting people's feelings. Be like, no, I can't talk to, to you. Protect your partner. Yeah. And your relationship. Like, yeah. what's what's more important, your current partner or your ex? And if you say your ex, then you should go be with your ex and not your current partner, and let that current partner go be with somebody else that's gonna value their time more. I said what I said. Someone said how to deal with a toxic mother-in-law. Uh -huh. Oof. I have never encountered something like that. So I feel like I, the, I, I have never. Communicate heard. with your partner? That's like the best mm. I got. I've never dealt with a toxic mother-in-law. Normally it's just my exes that were toxic, but their moms are always great. They're, they're cool. Um, I don't know. You have to, okay, here's going to be a very controversial topic. I don't care. 
make sure the person you're dating is not like a mama's boy either or like a mommy's girl. You can be, but you also, your partner has to know and has to set boundaries and make sure that his mom doesn't disrespect you either. You know what I mean? Like his mom always doesn't come first now. You also come first sometimes now. You are like the partner, you know? You're not the mom, but I I, I personally, I would fucking ignore it because you're not about to disturb my peace. I'm, I'm dating your daughter. I'm not dating you. So how you feel about me is not my problem. But if you're also trying to make my life a living hell and my partner is doing nothing about it, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you because you're also setting the tone for your mother. And if you're allowing your mother to disrespect me in our relationship and I'm not about to like fight or anything, then I'm out. You know, like I have a lot to lose. I'm not gonna fucking fight. Yeah. So your partner, I feel like also has, plays a big role in like setting that fucking boundary. I'm like, mom, stay in your fucking lane and leave, let my girl like be, you know? Mm-hmm. Unless unless your girl is like absolutely fucking toxic and sometimes, sometimes your parents do know what's best. Because mm-hmm. there are some crazy ass bitches out there, I will say. That's facts, honestly, no? yeah. What's another one? Um, These are good questions. Oh, bitch. People said, say it louder for the people in the back. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> And I feel like those toxic mother-in-laws, they just don't think that they're... Can you see your face? They don't think that they're the problem. Someone... It, ugh, go ahead. Someone said, how do you, like, date or, like, find people to date when you don't use, like, online apps and stuff? Like, what tips would you have? Gabby, you answer that. Because I, like, I work on social media. It's hard for me. I think that... I think I talked about it before in an episode, yeah. too, where I was, like, sometimes... It sounds weird, but, like wherever you're the most social is where you can meet people so like for me it used to be like work like I worked a very social job yeah so like not only people like I I'm not saying co-workers necessarily but just like the people (laughs) I'd come into contact boss the people I would come into contact with like at my job like customers and stuff like sometimes like you can find good conversation and good friends there so I don't see why that couldn't be a potential area for you to maybe find someone to pursue yeah as long as it's like wanted on both ends you know yeah I agree with her like just yeah yeah, what she said somewhere where you feel comfortable you know it's not a bad thing to meet people on dating apps and it's also some people just want to meet them like when they're out so I feel like if you want to meet someone to date that's not on social media you have to just get out there Mm. I don't care if you're shy grocery store yeah if you have social anxiety you have to outgrow that shit and the only way to outgrow that shit is by getting out there and telling your mind to shut the fuck up and that you're in control because social media wasn't always a thing and dating apps weren't always a thing and people Mm -hmm. would still meet and fall in love so exactly yeah so just get out there more be out there more start saying yes to like more outings like when your friends invite you out or like more opportunities because if you don't meet a partner, you're probably going to meet a friend in that time. So yeah. really, it's a win-win. You know what I mean? I like What's getting... the best advice you've ever received? And maybe we'll end it on this one. Ooh, good. The best advice I've ever received. You know, I, I probably can't answer that question because I've gotten great advice from my sister, my family, my therapist. I have a healer right now. But one one piece of advice that's not the best, but something that I'm currently learning right now in my life is as an empath, we're, we're emp- like empaths, I need to remember that I am not responsible for everybody else's feelings. I need to remember that I am not responsible on how you feel. It is not my duty to make sure you're always happy and you feel good and you feel better. Is everybody okay? Okay, cool. And then I wonder why I'm so fucking drained, burnout, and fucking depressed. Because yeah. being an empath, you have to be a strong empath. I think people don't talk about that enough. You need to learn how to be a strong one and understand that you can be empathetic for people, but also understand that their feelings are not your responsibility. responsibility. That's good. That's not maybe the best piece, but that's something that's that a I'm, crucial one though. Yeah, that's what I'm practicing right now. Like the way, for example, like we're practicing Pilates right now. I just joined a Pilates class. That's something I'm I'm practicing right now. Like when I when I say something uncomfortable to like my partner, or something that's like making her feel some kind of way, I'm like, your feelings are not my responsibility. If you're upset over a boundary, I just I just said that's on you, not on me. I'm gonna go ahead and walk away now. 
before I start feeling bad because you're gonna, you know? Yeah. What about you? What's so, maybe not the best piece of advice, but more of like, what is something that like you're practicing or that you want to be better at right now? Well, something that has always stuck with me the most, and I do think actually it is like the best advice I've ever gotten, okay. is like every situation where you're uncomfortable is an mm-hmm. opportunity for you to grow. Oof. Because I feel like being someone with like really high levels of anxiety, mm. I let myself like limit myself in mm. a lot of situations or like I prevented myself from trying a lot of new things. Yeah. And it wasn't until I had someone tell me that, that like mm. every time you're uncomfortable is a situation that is like prompting you for growth. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because like I do feel like growth comes in uncomfortable situations that has like I've always I tell myself that anytime I'm getting anxious or uncomfortable about doing something mainly in like social settings stuff like that and it's always proven true like Mm -hmm. every time I accomplish something like that I do feel like I've grown more from that situation so that's so good because yeah you more so have to like talk to yourself like am I anxious to go to this like event Yes, but what am I going to gain from this? Let's let's Mm -hmm. look at like the long term. I'm going to meet new people. I'm going to make new friends. I'm going to, after this event, I'm going to be a little bit more social than I was Mm -hmm. before. And then things start to get easier, honestly. Every time I've told myself that, the next time that kind of situation arises, it's easier for me to do it, to go about it, to attack it. Yeah, exactly. Because the only way to kind of, you can never really silence your anxiety or social anxiety, but you can put like a a pause and a shut the fuck up to it, Mm Loki, by telling yourself that you are in control of your mind. Most people think that their mind is in control of you. No. What you need to understand that whatever you feed yourself is what's going to happen, you know? But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys are like doing the visual, we're so sorry that we were like looking at the TikTok and you guys at the same exact fucking time. But I want to make sure we give everybody our undivided attention. But if you're just listening to this video, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to leave us a five star review, a good rating, comment. Let us know how you guys like the episode. Let us know what else you guys want to hear, listen to, whatever. And yeah, just let us know and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Say bye, Gabby. Adios. <laughs> bye, you guys. <laughs>